a leopard gecko or any species of reptile that you can possibly own, if it has access to the sun in nature, then it, its own body has an active want, an active need, and an active defense against those rays. <sighs> Can albino leopard geckos have UV? Now this isn't so much of a answer in that question because there is no nobody asking that question. You've got two sides of people. People that say every animal should have UV. But I'm not too sure about albinos because of their eyes or because of their pigment. They lack melanin in their skin, so won't it hurt them? And then you've got the other side of the fence, a bit like the bearded dragon haters with the loose substrate. No, you can't give them UV light, you can't do this, you can't do that. Wrong. This is the scientific answer to that question that nobody's actually answering. So, can they have UV? Simple answer, if you're here for it, yes they can. They benefit more than they don't benefit. How? How can we give them UV and give them all the benefits that come along with UV? Oh, I've just seen. Check it out. Amber is out. He's just cleaning shed. Sorry, off topic. How can we provide them their perfect environment with the adequate UV lighting? Because you do have to consider that our albino leopard geckos in the wild. They just don't normally last long because they're an easy target for prey. They can't camouflage into their native habitat because they don't have the black pigment. Their eyes glow bright red. They are an easy target. Granted, in captivity we have a few different variants of albinos, but there are ways of giving them the UV. And leopard gecko with UV lighting benefits in so many different ways. They can't they don't have to fully be out in the UV to get those benefits. Sometimes they can just lay in their hides with their tails sticking out. That's called partial basking. And that does exactly the same job. It absorbs all the nutrition, all the energy that's coming from that actual light. Now what happens is inside the leopard gecko's actual body, if they get given UV lighting, because you've got to keep in mind UV lighting is like tons and tons of tiny little batteries. You know yourself, take for example you. If you've been stuck in all day, you're sort to like this but you go out for a little walk and you just you're a lot more energized that's the uv being absorbed through your skin giving you the enrichment and the mindset the um, the peace of mind that just sort of relaxes you out in leopard geckos it helps them their skin absorbs it, it gives them that extra energy that sort of want and need to constantly do stuff instead of just laying around the uv rays also come down and get absorbed into all the naturalistic materials, the slate work, the plants, the sand, the soil, the solid ground, the absolutely every material that's in nature. It will get absorbed into that to some extent, depending on the colour and the texture of the actual material, depends on how much it actually absorbs. And it stores it. And then as soon as the light starts to fade, it starts to slowly give off that energy a little bit more. So if your leopard gecko is laying down on top of a piece of slate, it's getting the UV rays from above and from underneath. But don't get mistaken, UV doesn't mean visible lights. Take Callus versicolor. This is Mooshu's enclosure just here. You can physically see the light, but it doesn't actually mean that that lamp's actually giving off enough UV light. To do that, we have a little tool in the trade called a solar meter, which is this machine just here. It's a 6.5. Uh, da, 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 da. A 6.5 solar meter. And we basically just press that and it tells you the number. Obviously zero because we're inside now. UV doesn't pass through most glasses so that we haven't got any UV here. Now on Northern Exotics, we actually do have the solar meter like I've just shown you. And we do a lot of tests with this. And loads of finding out stuff that the trade doesn't actually tell you. So if it's something you are interested in or if you just want to subscribe for the fun of it, I'd really appreciate it. We do come up with some cracking content that you're bound to enjoy. Yeah, but let's take, for instance, if we go over to Attenborough, my green tree pythons enclosure, we'll open that up. And um, basically, see that lamp just there running the whole length uh, there? Oh, I need to clean the spider's webs. That's the UV rays. We'll put that directly underneath the UV lamp. Boom. There you go. So it shows a UV reading compared to the UV lamp. Now, things do reduce that UV. Take, for instance, the mesh top of this actually reduces the UV down. That should normally fire a bit more. Let's take, for instance, look just above it, just here. Uh, let's see, look, me right underneath it. So this is going to be really, really high. 9.2 UVI. That's way too high. A leopard gecko falls. Let's see if we can find it. There we go. Boof. Ferguson zone 1 between 0 0.7 and 1.4.
Now, not everybody does have a solar meter. They are around 300 quid. I'll link it down in the description down below if anybody does want to actually have a look at it. But normally on your UV lamps, you have a, some sort of a graph on the sides, on the back, and they will actually tell you what the UVI reading is at a certain distance away from that lamp to the animal's head. So always use that to have a look at it. Now that does only really work when there's no obstruction between the UV lamp and the actual leopard gecko itself. So take for instance, if you've got your UV lamp on top of a mesh screen top enclosure, then you're gonna get a reduction of around about 35% compared to what it says on the actual lamp itself. Now you can get a full unit where you can buy the uh, reptile systems have got their Eco T5 unit. They've got a reflector in there and the reflector can be taken out, turned over and then put back in and it's a high output reflector. So you've got a reflector and flip it over, you've got a high output reflector. On their packaging, they've got the UV rate, the UVI rating at different distances away from the animal's head at both sides of the reflector. I must admit, reptile systems are really coming up in the uh, reptile hobby and really starting to push the limits of what we're doing on the UV rays. They're doing all this loads of scientific reads. They're definitely worth following. Go and follow them on their Instagram and their Facebook page and you'll see what I mean. No, if you've got a leopard gecko and you've not got UV lighting, do you find it just lays around all day? All night? Just doesn't really move much and when it does move, it's really slow. My leopard gecko, let's go and check out her enclosure. This is it just here. So yes, it does have UV lighting just up there. Let me talk you through it. No, it's not sand. It's a solid substance. What's that hole there? We've got a moist hide, uh, which is accessible from the side of the enclosure, so we don't have to constantly go keep going in. Fully live planted, fully natural materials. This is all natural rock work, natural slate. It, it, that's a must. Now, the wavelengths of light come down in a wavelength. It gets absorbed into this and it reflects off this in a slightly different wavelength, which makes it more natural to what the animals would naturally have in the wild. Currently, uh, she's hiding all the way under there at the moment. That's our hot hide anyway. Now, how does it benefit them? The UV rays get into their skin. It helps produce their organs, keeping their organs more alive. Part of their organs help produce various vitamins and minerals or helps absorb those vitamins and minerals. So take, for example, if you've got UV lighting in your enclosure, you do not want to supplement their diet with vitamin D3. Their body will produce enough vitamin D3 with the adequate UV lighting. So if you give them D3 additives and you use UV lighting, you're going to risk... Uh, vitamin d3 overdose various things like that they can help absorb all the nutrition out of their actual live food just making them a lot better so this is where highly gut loaded live food benefits your leopard geckos especially when you've got uv lighting if uv lighting plus the gut loaded live food adds for a massive boost in your immune system on your leopard geckos now i just want to just want to show off Attenborough because he's absolutely amazing. Uh, plus, it's uh, it's UV day. Check it out. We've got all our UV lamps ready to install into uh, all the other animals. Now, if you are adding UV lights into your albino leopard geckos enclosure, there's a couple of things you want to take into consideration solely because of the eyes and because of the skin. They hide a lot more. So you're going to want to add a lot more hides. Now, that's so that they can escape. Now, if the UV rays get a little bit too much for these animals, they will go out and hide. Their body will tell them to go out and hide. A bit like if you're sunbathing on a beach and it just gets a little bit warm, you can feel it on your skin. Right, I need to go in the shade. I need to go under that umbrella bar just over there by the pool. These guys are exactly the same. Their body tells them to get out of the sun. And that's where you need a couple of different hides. So we've got two just there. You can see the top one. That allows a little bit more lighting than the one underneath. The one underneath isn't even pitch black in there. She does actually like it in there, but they allow a little bit of lighting, but not too much. So if she just wants to partially get out, she can. Directly under there. You see that little hole? And there's another little hole just there underneath that slab. That's a pitch black hide. So if she totally wants to get out of all of the UV rays, she can. This is the hot side of the enclosure. There's the infrared heat projector by Mega Ray. Now there's another hide, which I can't really show you, but it's underneath that slab just there. And she gets into it under there. Again, that's another total pitch black hide because that's at the front of the enclosure. 
and the lights at the back of the enclosure. Now she's got two hides down here, uh, one just in there and one just in there. Now that one goes in and then along. So it, she could partially bask on this side of the cold hide and then go all the way down and in if she wants to get total darkness in a cold hide. That one allows a little bit of lighting, but again, the entrance is facing this way, whereas the UV lamp is over this side. So it's actually pitch black in there just because of the placement of the entrance to the hole. And she's also got a moist hide just up there in that hole, which is da -da -da -da, just in there. We can remove that tub and give it a good spray down and stuff like that. So you do want to add multiple hides. Now, all the care guys say add three hides. You need a hot hide, a cold hide, and a moist hide. Add 12 hides. Screw what they say. Add as many hides as you physically can. There's loads of ways in there where she's, do you know the pitch black hide at the back of the enclosure? She made that herself. Same as the one at the front. I put that piece of slate over there and filled it full of substrate underneath for one of the plant roots. She dug it out, she hides under there now. Add as many hides as you can possibly fit. Where it looks half decent, many different materials so that it's added enrichment. She can use it to climb her claws down. Naturalistic materials, slate rock is absolutely perfect because it does do difference with the UV rays. The wavelengths will come down like this, dead alert. It'll hit that, hit those slates. It will absorb into the slate and then slowly go off it in a different wavelength. So that's a natural thing that happens in nature that a lot of people don't actually provide in captivity. Now, the two different wavelengths obviously have a benefit. Now, here's one for you. This is something that a scientist has actually found out. A leopard gecko or any species of reptile that you can possibly own, if it has access to the sun in nature, then it, its own body has an active want an active need and an active defense against those rays. That's something you should always keep in mind. Now you do have to keep in mind the Ferguson zone to make sure you do have the right lamp at the right height away from the animal's head to be able to give him the correct amount. You don't want him falling asleep in those UV rays and then burning because you've put a 10% in there or you've put a Ferguson zone three lamp in there and it only needs a Ferguson zone one lamp, a 6% or less. Do you know what I mean? You really need to be careful with that. So providing you've got the proper UV lamp that you need, you can go for something like the 5%, you can go for, like I do, I go for the Reptile Systems Ferguson Zone 1 for a leopard gecko at 30 centimetres away from the head. If you've got that, you supplement his diet without adding vitamin D3 into his diet. You give your animal highly, highly gut-loaded bugs and insects for him to eat. Give them enough hides to go through, enough areas where they can do partial basking, dappled light, pitch black darkness. Your animal is going to thrive better than if you don't have UV lighting. And the same knowledge goes for morphs. Doesn't matter on the morph, the leopard gecko's natural instinct, his natural body, will tell him when he needs to get out of that sun. Thanks for tuning in. My name's Richard. This channel's called Northern Exotics. Peace.